what's up everybody welcome to BioS3 Raw TV today I just got done doing my cardio behind me on the treadmill which is what I've been doing for a little while to try to stay a little bit leaner bless you Bruno sneezing on the floor and I was thumbing through my, my phone I was looking at different things and since the great flip thing just happened this weekend I'm noticing an outpouring of emotion support people are generally upset that Greg is gone and I met him several times and I, I get it he's a nice guy but it wasn't really like following his career. I wasn't following what he was doing. So just like what I did with Ziz, I looked into it. I started watching some of the videos, reading things. There was a video on his YouTube channel, if you search it, about him and his dog, which you probably won't get through three minutes of it without fucking completely bawling your eyes out. If you have any heart whatsoever, if you have any soul, you will fucking, you'll be crushed at three minutes off. You can make it to the 17 minute. I made it all the way through, but I was a fucking babbling mess by the time I got there. And I said, okay, I get it. I understand why now. Just like with Ziz, I understand why this guy was so, you know, loved and why people were motivated by him and why they, he was very, very real. Like what he did with that dog video was very fucking real and very raw. Not many people would do something like that. I don't know if I could actually, I'm raw as fuck, but I don't know if I could actually take a camera in to the vet while I'm holding my dog and put my dog down on camera. I don't know if I could do that, but he did it. So I see this and I see a lot of, you know, support for him. But I see those fuckers who say shit like, who gives a fuck? You know, you, the world just lost another fucking meathead. It doesn't fucking matter. Why do you guys even give a fuck? This is stupid. Like, nobody cared about him before he died, but now all of a sudden everybody cares about him. And that's not necessarily true. This guy had a lot of shit going on before and a lot of people that cared about him before. And a lot of postings and shit on his YouTube channel. He had a hundred and something thousand subscribers. in his own website that had three million fucking hits. I mean, it's, it's, it's not like people didn't care about him before. People are hurt. And people can be hurt by it. Everybody has their own reality. There's reality, and there's your own reality. And each one of us has one of that, one of those, our own reality. Now, just because we have our own reality doesn't mean it's actually reality. And these people saying this, they're a bit sociopathic, narcissistic. They get egos the size of fucking the Twin Towers. But what they fail to realize is something like this happens, and you see this, this reaction. Put yourself in those shoes. Like, take yourself. You're the one saying, oh, he's a fucking meathead. He shouldn't have been train fucking training near the tracks. He shouldn't have been doing that. He shouldn't have been fucking doing this. He's fucking stupid, so it doesn't matter if he's gone. Put yourself in that position. If you died tomorrow, how many people would show up at your funeral? Maybe like a dozen, maybe. Because right now, I know most people just think you're a fucking dick. Unless it's a close personal friend or a relative who you ask you kiss regularly, most people think you're a fucking dick. So you got maybe a dozen people that show up. How many fucking YouTube videos are going to be made about you? How many people are going to fucking put up tributes on Facebook? Or who, how many people are even going to fucking talk about it? Even in passing. Like, fucking nobody. But you get the balls to say that this person who actually did inspire and motivate people, you know, was stupid for fucking going on the train tracks. He pushed the, pushed the limits a little bit, and he's stupid for it. And I know that, you know, a lot of people out there seem to think the fucking world revolves around them. They really do. They seem to think they have the key to fucking everything, and they know everything, and they're the fucking coolest thing, and everybody else fucking sucks. And they talk like that. But let's face facts. Tomorrow, if you were gone, who would care? Who would notice? That's my question to you. Who would notice if you were gone tomorrow? How many people's lives have you affected in a positive way to that when you're gone, you have a legacy left behind? And I don't mean you have a legacy like you had a kid, okay, so that your name fucking continues. I mean a legacy that you have almost like a myth or a legend about you. People are going to talk about you until... For the ever, for the, to the end of time. They're going to say things about like, oh, well, I learned this exercise. Or I remember this, you know, so-and-so sat me down when I had this problem. And, you know, like he really helped me with this. Like there's a legacy you leave behind that you have to step outside your own reality to leave behind. And I think that's super important on a lot of levels. There are legacies left behind. Like, I mean, one of the big ones that I always think about is Bruce Lee. You know, I didn't know Bruce Lee. He was dead before I was born, I think. I was born in 75. But anyways, I was at least very small when he died. But the impact that he had in the world because of what he did and how far he went outside of his comfort zone to try to put things into the world that nobody had done before, that the world needed at the time. You know, now people are going to say, oh, you shouldn't compare Brad, uh, Greg Plitt, Brad Pitt, Greg Plitt to, to Bruce Lee, but in his own way, that's what he did. He went out there and put himself out there and he made an impact and now he has a legacy that's going to be left behind. Now, there are a lot of people out there and some people are so narcissistic that all they need is themselves. Like, they could sit in a fucking house by themselves and be like, I'm the fucking king of the world. Not even have a concept of what's going on out there reality-wise. 
But there are some people that have, you know, no family, no family life, a bad family life. There's people that may be hurt money-wise. There's people that may be, you know, physical problems that, you know, they may have a fucking arm that has been broken and it's healing. There's so many people out there that are worse off than you, or they may even be better than you, better off than you. But they're out there and they need something to look up to, some kind of inspiration. And lately, I've been kind of stepping back. And I don't know, the older I get, the more philosophical I get, the more in-depth I get with things, the deeper I think, the more I take myself out of bodybuilding itself and look for other things in the universe that I never looked at before. You become so entangled in the bodybuilding world that all you think about is bodybuilding and fucking lifting weights and being better and competing and this shit that you kind of lose sight of everything that's around you. And I said, okay, well, how, you know, how can I take the things around me and use those to make myself better, but actually use those to give something back to someone else? I, inspiration, motivation. Where, where does that come from? Do I have to have a, a, you know, a bodybuilding fucking pro that I have to get it from? No. You know, when we went to, uh, I mean, we live in Washington, outside Washington, D.C., where all the monuments are. Every time we go to D.C. and I see, like, the Washington Monument... Capitol building, the White House, any of those monuments. I step back and I look at them and I realize what they stand for. It has nothing to do with bodybuilding. I look at them and I say what they were built for, what symbol they mean. I mean, what, you know, I'm trying to picture the people back then building these, these monuments and what they stood for and how much power that they actually encompassed just being there. And that's inspiring to me. And 20 years ago, I wouldn't have gave a shit. I was too involved with bodybuilding. I was too wrapped up in my own head. I thought I was the fucking king of the world. I was one of these narcissistic fucking douchebags who likes to think that the fucking world revolves around them and they have all the answers. And they don't. And the answers don't come from a fucking gym. They don't come from fucking bodybuilding pros. The answers come from the fucking universe. Now, this may be far out thinking. I'm starting to sound more like Mike Mentzer fucking the older I get. But you start to realize the older you get that there's more involved in the world than just you. And if you can draw inspiration from the Washington Monument... If you could draw inspiration from Greg Plitt, I mean, fuck, I was watching the other night just for the fuck of it. It was like, I don't know, like midnight or something. I was fucking thumbing through the channels. It said J-Lo. Jennifer Lopez had her fucking concert that was on HBO. And I was like, J-Lo. I'm not even a big fan, whatever. So I put the fucking thing on. And I'm watching it, and I'm watching J-Lo go through this tour. And she's a performance, a performer. And she's doing her thing. And she's sick. And she's got two kids on tour with her. And she's going through these time changes flying all over the place. Now, some people are like, well, she gets paid for that. Yeah. But to push yourself to get paid for that, I'm watching this woman's work ethic go through this. And I'm like, how many fucking people out there right now would bitch about, oh, she just fucking sings and dances and gets paid? How many of you would put that effort into something else to get that out of it? Not many. That's why there's only one of her or one of Elvis or one of fucking Michael Jackson. There's not many people that will push themselves to that limit. That will be able to inspire fucking hundreds and thousands and millions of people. I stepped back and I was like, you know what? Right now, I feel inspired by that woman's work ethic right now. Like, I'm not going to get fucking five hours sleep. I'm not going to get six hours sleep tonight. I'm going to get three hours sleep because I have a fucking client in the morning. But you know what? She's doing a fucking lot more than I am. Why the fuck should I bitch? And I drew inspiration from the fact that she could push herself so hard. I'm like, I don't want to be a little bitch and not push myself that hard. What the fuck? You know, so you can take it from all different places, and it doesn't matter where it comes from. It, it will come to you, and it will help you. But you have to be aware and open to, and open-minded to look for these things that are around you, not close-minded like, Brad Clint was just a fucking meathead. Who gives a shit? People shouldn't even give a fuck. How many people give a fuck about you when you're making that statement? How many people's lives have you fucking touched, literally touched? I'm not saying that you just wrote a fucking post on Facebook and people liked it. Who fucking cares? How many people have you actually touched? Like fucking this many? Or maybe this many? Who the fuck knows? But the bottom line is you're nothing even close to comparing to what that guy was in his lifetime. If you to open your fucking narcissistic mouth and say something like that, it's just a fucking douchebag thing. And I am a huge believer in karma. And it's coming for you, motherfucker. Biosurtraining at gmail.com. Leave comments down below, but don't fight. www.biosurtraining.com is a blog. It's the inspiration bicep and we're out.